Hey everybody, it's Ken from Fort Hickory. Now, I don't normally shoot an unattached video intro like this, but so here's what happened. The hike you're about to watch, I filmed a couple months ago and I've been trying to edit it ever since. The problem is the whole first half of the video is boring. It is really, bo it is unnecessarily boring. Every single one of you would have turned the video off and stopped watching. So I'm doing you a favor. I'm cutting out the whole first half of the video. You don't need it. Here's all the information you're missing. I'm hiking Mount San Antonio, better known as Mount Baldy. It's the third tallest mountain in Southern California, right behind San Jacinto and San Gorgonio. I'm hiking the Manker Flats Loop, which takes me up to the summit, and then down a very treacherous, scary, and literally deadly part of the trail called the Devil's Backbone. And on this particular day, because of a scheduling conflict, I'm getting a very late start. So I'm chasing the sun. I'm not sure I'm going to make it back to my car in time before the sun sets. And maybe I don't. Who knows? You'll have to watch to find out. Anyway, you're picking up the hike about three quarters of the way up the mountain. I hope you enjoy. Wow. What in the world is this? Almost at the top of a daggone mountain. Some sort of a wrecked machinery. I'm going to check it out closer. Well, it's pretty weather-worn. It's obviously been here for a while. I'm no expert in machinery, but judging from the green, the olive drab color on the underside that the sun hasn't faded yet, and the overall shape, and this thing here with that shaft coming down, my uneducated guess is this is some sort of crashed military helicopter who knows how long ago. Not too far away, we've got more twisted wreckage. So, I just passed a gentleman who knew what that wreck was. It's a World War II aircraft that crashed here. In fact, uh, during World War II, they used to fly training missions in this area, and it crashed. So, there you go. And if I'm not mistaken, And if I'm not mistaken, these little man-made windbreaks signal the summit. Let me get up here, see if I can find the uh, summit marker. Yep, I made it. Summit of Mount Baldy, Mount San Antonio at 10,064 feet. That's pretty windy up here, which means that the descent down the Devil's Backbone might be a little treacherous. Uh, you'll see what I mean when I get there. I'm going to take a minute, eat some trail mix, relax, enjoy the view, and then head on back. Woo! It really is windy up here, and it's a pretty hazy day, so you can't see very far. That way's the south. That's pretty much the direction that I came up. Uh, west is that way. It's a pretty view that way, but again, pretty hazy. And I'm going to be heading down pretty much easterly, going that direction. Woo! This wind is freezing cold, just absolutely frigid. And I found out part of the reason why, even though it's May, <laughs> we got snow fields up here still. Woo! So it's amazing what the wind chill factor can do. I found this little like, almost like a little cubby hole uh, breaking the wind from me. I'm right here next to the snow, but it is now hot because I'm in the direct sun and no wind on me. Uh, if I just step three feet out that way, it is freezing cold. Whew. Well guys, I'm hurting. I made a pretty major navigational error. I was hiking down the wrong side of the Dagon Mountain. I've been hiking for a while and it kept seeming like the sun was in the wrong place and I kept waiting for the trail to turn. The sun was in the wrong direction. I kept waiting for the trail to turn. Finally, I came around a curve in the mountain and I could see there was a whole ridge system between me and where I needed to be. I'd been hiking for about 40 minutes at that point, pulled out my GPS and yeah, I was way off course. I was going down the wrong side of the mountain. So I had to turn around and hike all the way back up the very steep summit of this mountain again. To make matters worse, I had to cross some snow fields in my trail runners. So both of my feet are wet, my right foot in particular is soaking wet, freezing cold. The wind up here is frigid. I can hardly feel my fingertips, I can barely operate the camera. <laughs> I 
I guess there's no use complaining about it. All I can do is correct course and keep going. I just hope I have the mental faculties when I get to the devil's backbone. It can get a little treacherous. <laughs> All the things I do for the love of hiking. Wind is so strong. It's whistling through my emergency whistle on my sternum strap. This wind is ridiculous. It's so bad that some gusts I can barely stay upright. I've never wanted a tree line so bad in my life. It's so windy. It's hard to breathe. I mean, talk about parachute pants. Now I've dipped behind some rocks that are blocking me for most of the wind, but I'm about to pop out onto the most dangerous part of this trail, the real devil's backbone. It's a very narrow pathway with an almost sheer drop on either side. Um, it's in this place where they say a few years ago, a girl died being blown off the ridgeline on a windy day. And I don't know if you've noticed, but it's a pretty windy day. Okay, here's the first part. And now for the really scary part. <laughs> and I didn't die. <laughs> I know some of you were hoping that I would die, but I'm sorry, you're gonna have to put up with me just a little bit longer. And now I'm done with the scary part, I get to what could potentially be the easy part. Right over there is a ski lift that uh, in non-ski seasons still operates on the weekends and it'll take you all the way back down to close to where you parked your car. Now it is not a weekend, so it is not easy for me. I've still got a long hike to get back to where I'm going. But it's good to know that I'm past the devil's backbone and into sort of well-known territory. Sometimes it's easy to think that once you're done with the hardest part of a hike, you're done. Not even close. I got to get all the way down there before I'm done with this hike. That's actually why most hiking injuries happen on the way down. People take care on the way up. They're very cautious. Once they hit the summit, they think the difficult part's over. They stop being careful, and that's when they get hurt. The hike down to the ski... I don't, I'm not a skier, so I don't know what you call it. The place where ski people do ski things. The hike down there is just as steep as the hike up was. It is torturing my knees. I wish I had some skis. Made it down to the ski village? I don't know, whatever you call it. A little bit like a ghost town up here. Uh oh, I'll just take one of these back down. They work on scree, right? Now somebody told me there's a shortcut. I could follow this road back down this way. It winds around the mountain and that's the way I went down last time. It took forever to get back to my car. Somebody said it's a shortcut if you just follow the chairlift down. It's supposed to be a much rougher, but a lot quicker. So I'm racing the sun, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, knees. I'm taking the quick way. Whew. They weren't kidding when they said steep. It's loose dirt and gravel, and on some sections it's so steep I basically have to scree run to keep my balance. Woo. Uh, for those who don't know, when you scree run, uh, you dig in with your heels and let your momentum, you slide with your momentum as you go down. Oh, I've got an old knee injury. 
And my athletic trainer, Stephanie, has told me the worst thing for my knee is landing on my heel. So, uh, good thinking, Ken. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Woo! Okay, I think my knees had about enough of that. The trail meets up with the road. I think I'll take the road the rest of the way back to my car. It should be pretty easy from here. A dirt road, downhill all the way back to my car. So we end right back at the beginning here at San Antonio Falls. It has been one epic day of hiking. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really means a lot to me. I got some cool videos coming down the pipe. And if you have any questions about anything you've seen me do in my videos or questions about getting out into the outdoors in general, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to correspond with anybody. Uh, now, as for me, I can't rest here for too long. I just realized I left a package of beef jerky in my car and it's bear season, so I better hustle along and make sure I still have a car to return to. Fingers crossed. This is Ken at Fort Hickory. Adios.